Energy harvesting basically means the cultivation of energy. Energy can neither be created nor can be destroyed, but it can change forms from one form to another. So in this energy harvesting device, what we're trying to do is we're trying to use the optical energy, the thermal energy, and the mechanical energy and change it into electrical energy. Now, electricity is the only thing we can use right off the market. This device has different layers. So what happens is there is a layer of carbon nanotubes on the very top of the device. The second part of the device has a PCT material, which is a piezoelectric material. And this piezoelectric material is actually sandwiched between two electrodes. The carbon nanotubes create an actuation. Carbon nanotube is a perfect black body, which means it traps all the heat energy that is incident from the light source. The electric material is uh, a material that if you use mechanical force, it generates electricity. And if you generate electricity, if you put electricity on the electrodes, it can achieve a deformation. On the device, the CNT thin flame acts as an absorbent of heat and light energy. This causes the cantilever to bend, creating a mechanical deformation from the PZT. So as the device vibrates up and down, electrical energy is generated, and this is the basic principle of the device. I will now take you to my lab, where I'll show you how to actually make this device. So you are getting enlightened here. So welcome to my lab. Um, so what we do is, in making the device, we need a carbon nanotube thin flame, which we stick to the PZT wafer, and, uh, and then connect the wires to make the final device. Uh, so the things you would need are um, acetone, isopropyl alcohol, MCE filter, and carbon nanotubes. So you need 10 milligrams of carbon nanotubes, which you put in 100 ml of isopropyl alcohol, which I've already done that here uh, in this stuff. And we let it ultrasonicate in the ultrasonicator, uh, ultrasonicating machine for about 24 hours. So once we do this, we leave it here overnight. And that is when we come back tomorrow and do the further experiment. As you can see, the carbon nanotubes are well dispersed, dispersed in the IPA. Now we're going to use the vacuum filtration method to filter this using an MCE filter. Uh, which looks like this. This MCE filter can be easily dissolved in acetone and this, this is the main reason we use this. So what we do is we pour this IPA in the vacuum filtration chamber to get the carbon nanotube thin flips. The filtration took me five hours to complete. Once the filtration was done, I have carbon nanotube thin flips stuck on the wafer. Now I have to take this carbon nanotube thin flame out and put it in the already diced PZT wafer. I'll show you the process. Once we peel this off with a double sided tape, it kind of looks like this. And we measure the dimensions that are the dimensions of already diced PZT wafers which I have here. So since this is a double sided tape, I can use this to stick it right over the PZT wafer to make the device. So once the device is made, which I already have the device, I'm going to show you what it looks like. The PZT wafer that we diced was 25 mm by 8 mm and that, that was the size of the CNT that we cut using a double sided tape. The measurement was done basically on scale and after we do that, the electrodes on top and the bottom are nickel electrodes that we connect to the device and the device is ready. We can connect this to a battery or we can use it in advanced wireless sensor network applications.